Computer science is not the study of computers, nor is it only about programming. Sometimes, when people hear about computer science, they think, oh, computers and programming. In reality, computers are just a tool in computer science, and programming simply executes a sequence of instructions that we create. Computer science is all about computation, asking the question, what exactly can be computed? How can we compute it? And how fast can we compute it? Computation, you know, this word computation, is just a fancy way of saying any type of calculation that follows rules or a list of steps. Multiplying numbers like 1 times 2 is a computation. There are rules and steps to multiplying two numbers. Likewise, adding 15 plus 5 is a computation. Computer scientists also often toss the word algorithms. You'll hear it a lot, and that sounds fancy, but algorithms are simply the way that we solve problems. Algorithms are just the list of steps that we use to solve any type of problem. The rules in list of steps that apply to addition, like remember to carry your ones to the next column, if the current column adds to 10 or above, that's an algorithm. When you hear computations, Computations are calculations that follow algorithms. Computations follow algorithms. Because computer science dives into computations, we also think of problem solving. Can we solve this problem? How hard is this problem? How fast can we make the solution? Problem solving use computation. The most important skill of computer science is problem solving. Learning a programming language like Python is an excellent way to help you practice solving problems because programs are step-by-step -step instructions that you create in essence to solve your problems. If algorithms are the ways or the list of steps that we use to solve problems, programming is about taking out algorithms, taking that list of steps that we use to solve problems that we have thought and planned and write them into a programming language like Python. That's what programming is. The reason that we learn programming while learning computer science is because programming languages are languages that express computation and also, most importantly, they solve problems for you. Although we'll be using Python as our language of choice in these lectures, the language is not important. Understanding the fundamentals of programming and practicing problem solving in your own personal objectives and context is far more important. Practice makes perfect. Assuming that you have Python already installed on your computer, you can save an empty file as a Python file by clicking File, Save As, and making sure that the file name has a .py extension. For instance, I'm going to name this file tutorial.py, making sure it has the .py extension. Python has this IDE that I'm using, an integrated development environment, which serves as a program that you can write and run Python programs. I'll leave a link in the description. Now, the first thing about Python that we'll talk about are values. Values are letters or numbers that can be used in the language. What's an example? Numbers like 1 and 2, those are values. Words or sentences like, hello world, those are values. Every value has a type. Numbers like 1 and 2, they have a type called integers. Words or sentences like hello world have a type called strings. Strings are enclosed in quotation marks. Next thing we'll talk about are functions. Functions are fancy terms defining commands that do something in Python. The most used function in Python is the print function. We're using it right now. The print function, what it does is it displays values on the screen. So I can display for and hello world and they will appear on screen if I hit run and run the module. That's how we run our Python program. And what is displayed here is for and hello world because we put the value inside the parentheses, the pair of parentheses. For is in the pair of parentheses of the print function and hello world is also in the pair of parentheses. Now, every value has a type, remember that. And you can also check the type of your value with the type function. Python has a bunch of these pre-configured functions like print and type. Type and putting value in between the parentheses gives us the type of the value enclosed in the parentheses. You can put functions within functions. So I'm going to combine print and type, putting type 
function inside the print function so that I can display the type of these two values. Now we see for in hello world because I kept the two print statements at the top, but we also see the printed type functions. For is an int, which is short for integer, and str is short for string because hello world is a string because it's a set of words in a pair of quotation marks. Now let's talk about variables. Variables give a name to our values. We can assign new variables with values. The variable name must be on the left side, and then there's an equals, and then the values must be on our right side. For example, I'm writing here, question equals, quotation mark, how are you today? Question mark, quotation mark. X equals five and Y equals 2.5. Question is the equivalent of how are you today? Because of our assignment, we assigned how are you today to question. Y is equivalent to 2.5. X is equivalent to five. And we can use the print and type functions with our variables for all intents and purposes. That variable is equivalent to whatever value that we gave it. And I'm going to print each of the variables right now to show you that they're equivalent. Now I'm going to run the program and we're going to see the value and the type it is. So I put, how are you today? Quotation marks means that it's a string five. It's a number and it's integer. Then 2.5 is a new type float. What is a float? Float is the type given when there is a decimal point dividing the integer and fractional part. Two and a half has a decimal, so it's a float type. That's all you need to know about float types for now. And we can see the decimal point, meaning that this number will be a float, 2.5. It's a float. Whereas if I had a whole number, like 5, that's an integer. Now, variable names can use a combination of letters and numbers, and variable names are case sensitive, but there's a convention. When you use multiple word variable names like Python tutorial question, you put underscores between where each word is at, what separates each word. Instead of spaces, we put underscores. That's the convention in Python. So now I have a multiple word variable, and I put underscores between the multiple word variable wherever each word is separated. And I can print it like natural and it prints like any other variable. But instead of just one word, it is multiple words. Now, the next thing we'll talk about are you can't just name any variable anything you want. There are illegal characters, names that you cannot use. For instance, dollar symbol is an illegal character. So if you put a dollar symbol, inside a variable name, it's not going to work. That's just not going to work. You can run the program, you can test it out, you can name something like CS101 money symbol, and it just says syntax is incorrect, it's invalid syntax. Second thing that we need to talk about when it comes to variable names is there are keywords that are prohibited in variable names. And these keywords include a word like class, Class is a keyword in Python, and you just cannot use that keyword in variable names, alone at least. There are 29 keywords in Python, you don't have to remember them, but you can obviously tell by the orange coloring that that is a keyword. But if you put another word with the keyword, like Python underscore class, even though class is a keyword, there's no error and we can print out Python underscore class to get computer science 101 without any error because it's not just class. You have to use the keyword exactly if you want to get an error. So if you don't use the keyword exactly, if you put classes or class underscore one, then there's no error. Next thing that we'll talk about are statements. What is a statement? A statement is just a fancy way of saying a line that executes in Python. No print parentheses for parentheses is a statement x equals five is a statement print parentheses five that's another statement those are just lines that execute in python next thing that we'll talk about are expressions anything that evaluates something is called an expression one plus one an expression and you can print these expressions within the print function 
if I put 1 plus 1 within print function, it's going to equal to 2. And these expressions can be just individual values as well. 1 is an expression, variables are expressions, and you can print that normally like any other value that you would print out. Like here, I'm going to print out all of these expressions, and you can see 1 plus 1 equals 2. The individual 1 is printed out, and the x is printed out, which equals to 5. Next thing we'll talk about are operators. What are operators? Operators are special symbols like addition and multiplication that perform a computation. You can do simple math like 1 plus 2. I did 1 plus 1 up there. I'll change it to 1 plus 2. Then you can do 3 times 4. The asterisk symbol is used for multiplication. Two asterisk symbols are used for exponents like 2 to the second with two asterisks. So I'll do 2 space asterisk asterisk 2. And that's the equivalent of 2 to the second. And I can print these out. I'm highlighting the operators with the red underline. Those are called operators. And I can print these out. And the computation is calculated within Python after I run the program. And I can see the display and the result of these computations. 1 plus 2 is equal to 3. 3 times 4 is equal to 12. And 2 to the second power is 4. Operators in Python follow the order of operations, which you may remember as parentheses, takes priority, and then there's multiplication, division, and then addition and subtraction. Like your basic mathematics, operators follow the order of operations. I can set a variable called x to parentheses 1 plus 2 parentheses multiplied by 3, and the result would be 9 because of order of operations. 1 plus 2 happens first because it's in parentheses, which equals to 3. Then 3 is multiplied by 3, which equals to 9. And I can print this out, and I'll get 9 as the result. You can see, after I run the program, I get 9 because of order of operations. One neat thing is you can use the addition operator on strings to combine strings together. For example, I'm going to create some variables. Topping 1. Let's say topping 1 is equal to a string with quotation marks called pepperoni. And topping 2 is equal to mushrooms. And then we have the pizza. Pizza is equal to topic 1 plus a space in quotation marks. Because strings must be in quotation marks. Always remember, strings must be in quotation marks. Plus topping 2 plus quotation marks pizza. And we can print pizza and what the operator, the addition operator will do is it will add topping 1, which is equal to pepperoni, to a space. Then after the space, it'll add to topping 2 plus pizza, a space plus pizza. And this goes left to right in order. So addition as you imagine it, it would just combine the strings together. And we can run the program. And we can see when we print out pizza, it prints out pepperoni space mushrooms space pizza the last thing that we'll talk about in this video lecture are comments what are comments when programs get more complicated developers will leave comments that are basically notes that you or a future developer can understand what you did it, when you're looking back at your code because code can get to hundreds and thousands of lines long and if you didn't leave notes if you looked at your code a month later you would have no idea what you did so in python Comments in Python are prefixed by the pound symbol. So you put a pound symbol, then everything after that pound symbol on that line is a comment. But these comments are only for single line comments. So here I put number seconds. So a little note that I know seconds, the 1800 is just the number seconds and then minutes, seconds divided by 60. And when you print and run the program, None of the comments get printed out. They're just little notes that you or future developers can understand what you did. Now, those are for single line comments. A pound symbol is only for single line comments, but sometimes you want to put multiple line comments, bigger notes. So to do multiple line comments, you need to include triple quotation marks and then below you put another pair 
of triple quotation marks, one to start the comment and one to end the comment. And then anything in between these triple quotation marks, these pair of triple quotation marks, it's a comment. And if we print something after it, like print hello, only print hello happens. Hello, it's displayed, but the comment never appears because they're just simple notes for your developers. Hope you like this video. More to come next week.